So I just want to take a look at a couple of KSP problems. Um, and KSP is just equilibrium constant K, and the SP stands for solubility product. Um, it's really just referencing a certain type of reaction where you have typically an ionic compound, you have the solid on the left-hand side, and you have it breaking up into aqueous ions on the right-hand side. And it's an equilibrium that occurs when you have the solid ionic compound dissolved in water um, and you've reached a saturated condition where you still have some undissolved solid at the bottom and it's in equilibrium with the dissolved ions in the solution above it. So let's just look at a couple of different types. So a lot of problems you might see have the word solubility or even molar solubility in it. And don't let that complex wording throw you off. Um, the molar solubility of a salt, for example, the molar solubility of AgCl, it's just the molarity of AgCl in aqueous solution that's present at equilibrium. So it's how much dissolved AgCl you have in your solution in molarity. So a common example you might see is they give you the molar solubility or the solubility in molarity. If it's not molarity, it might be some grams per liter and you have to convert it to molarity first. Um, and they ask you to calculate the KSP for that particular ionic compound. So anytime you see KSP, you can write a chemical reaction where you put the product on the left, uh, sorry, you put the ionic compound as a solid on the left hand side and you're going to break it up into ions and those ions will be aqueous on the right hand side. And again, essentially what's happening in your container is you have some undissolved PbCl2 at the bottom and you have um, some dissolved um, ions in the solution above it. Essentially you've reached a saturated condition where the maximum amount of in this case lead to chloride has dissolved into the solution and that's why you have still have some undissolved at the bottom. In order to reach equilibrium you have to have some solid um, still present in your container or else you're not at equilibrium. So as soon as I see KSP I can write a reaction that fits where I have the solid ionic compound on the left and aqueous ions on the right. Notice since there's two CLs I have to, ke I have to keep the fact that there's two CLs on the right hand side and these now have um, charges because they are ions. When you are writing your equilibrium constant, and instead of just writing K, you can write KSP, uh, remember that you do not include any solids in your equilibrium expression. So my equilibrium expression for this particular reaction is just my products raised to the power that is their coefficient. In this case, the ions raised to the power that's their coefficient. I could put it over one or I can get rid of um, over one because anything over one is just itself. So in the problem it tells me the molar solubility is 0.014 and what that means again is that's just the concentration of my ionic compound in aqueous state at equilibrium. Now I don't see that written in KSP, that's not in my expression, but the ions are. So I can though figure out what the concentration of each of these ions are at equilibrium if I have the concentration of the entire ionic compound. So for every one PbCl2, I get one uh, Pb2 plus ion. So the Pb2 plus ion concentration at equilibrium would also be 0.014. For every one PbCl2, I get double the chloride ions as you kind of see in this reaction here. Um, so I'm really just using the subscripts, I'm multiplying by the subscripts to figure out the concentrations of the ions at equilibrium. So I'd have 0.028 molarity of chloride ion at equilibrium. Now I have what's present in my equilibrium expression. I can plug in these values. Don't forget to square the chloride ion concentration. And I can solve for KSP and I get 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So notice for the chloride ion concentration, because there's two for every one PbCl2, first I multiply by two, and then I'm also squaring it in my KSP expression. So sometimes people forget to do one or the other. So these are um, actually really simple problems. Um, I've also seen them kind of um, give a certain 
volume in the problem and still ask for the KSP and in this case the volume it's really not going to affect anything it would change the moles that would dissolve but your concentration would end up being exactly the same so more moles might dissolve in a bigger volume and less moles in a smaller volume but you would end up reaching the same molar solubility so this is one type of problem. Um, another type of problem you might see is the exact opposite, where they give you the KSP, and they either ask for the molar solubility or solubility of MGF2. And that's just, what's the concentration of MGF2 um, in aqueous solution once you've reached the equilibrium condition? Um, again, whenever you see KSP, I can write a reaction where I have the ionic compound as a solid on the left, and it's breaking up into its constituent ions in aqueous conditions on the right, because I have a saturated solution, I have some undissolved MGF2 at the bottom, and it's in equilibrium with its ions. Some of it is dissolving, as some of it is recrystallizing. Um, and if I was to write the KSP, again, remember that that MGF2 solid, this left-hand side, is going to drop out of my equilibrium expression. It's not there because um, my concentration of it is not going to be changing over time. I might make more mass or less mass, but the volume would change proportionately, so the concentration doesn't change over time, and that's why it's not written there. So you might ask, Okay, well, how do I approach this problem? And I like to approach this kind of problem with an ice box. Um, so you might say, well, initially they don't really tell me anything. But if I can kind of assume that if I'm trying to figure out how much is soluble in water, that I'm going to start with dumping some sort of amount of solid in there to start with, and probably only solid to start with. So if I assume I have all solid to start with, and I'm just adding solid to see how much would dissolve, um, then I can assume that uh, my initial ions are zero. And it really doesn't matter how much solid I start with, as long as, again, I'm at equilibrium, or I'm going to be reaching equilibrium, there will be some solid left. But it really doesn't matter because there is no MGF2 solid in my equilibrium expression. So I can really just cross out this column. I don't need the initial amount to start to, to complete this problem. So I put my change in. Remember, products we put as positive, And I bring down the coefficient with the change, so 2x for F minus. And um, at equilibrium, I don't really know any other information, so I'm just going to rewrite this box in terms of x. 0 plus x is x. 0 plus 2x is 2x. And now I can just plug into my equilibrium expression. Here's my KSP on the left-hand side. Here's my Mg2 plus concentration. And here is my F minus concentration, 2x, and I square it. And again, notice that the coefficient comes into play in two places. It comes into play here, okay? from my ice box or my ice table from the stoichiometry. And it also comes into play being squared, and a lot of times people forget one or the other. You also could have skipped the ice box, and a lot of people just say, hey, I'm going to assign the molar solubility of MgF2 as x, and if I do that, then the Mg2 plus would be x as well, because for every 1 Mg, there's 1 Mg2 plus. And the concentration of F minus would be 2x, because for every 1 Mg, there's 2 Fs, so I get 2x. And I'm just plugging it in, that's how I get the squared. So you really can skip the icebox step. I'm going to tell you why I like the icebox in a moment. If I distribute that square, don't forget that it's being distributed to both the 2 and the x. I end up getting 4 as my coefficient in front, and I get x cubed. And from there, I can just essentially, this is just algebra, okay? I divide both sides by 4. I take the cubed root of both sides. Um, if you can't figure out how to do that on your calculator, you can take the number and raise it to the 1 third power. And I get that x is 2.65 times 10 to the negative 4. And that x, which is the concentration of Mg2+, plus, or it's also the concentration of MgF2 at equilibrium, and that's what we're really trying to find in this problem. Sometimes you'll see people solving KSP problems instead of x. They're giving the solubility of MgF2, um, they're assigning that as x, so they sometimes give it the variable s. Um, so you might see problems if you look up in different resources, them using s instead of x, it's the same thing. 
why I like doing this with an ice box still, even though you can do it without it, is sometimes a problem will ask, calculate the molar solubility of that, um, and they'll say starting with a 0.1 molar concentration of NaF. So they're dissolving MgF2 solid in a solution of 0.1 molar NaF. And NaF, if you remember, group 1 ions are always soluble. NaF would break down into Na plus and F minus. So essentially, I'm not starting with zero concentration of ion. I might be starting with 0.1 molar of F minus. So that's why I still like doing this with an ice box, just to kind of teach you the practice of doing it. Um, so your initials don't always have to be zero. You can assume them to be zero if it's, if it's just dissolved in water and nothing else is mentioned that it's starting with. But if it's dissolved in some other type of solution, see what's in that solution and that might change your initial values. Okay. Um, so aside from that situation where it's not dissolved in water, um, if it is dissolved in water, you can um, make an ice box, assuming you have all initial solid and no molarity of ions initially. Um, or you can assign the molar solubility of the ionic compound X and then write the concentration of ions in terms of X and plug into KSP. Meaning, as a shortcut, looking at this example, calculate the molar solubility or solubility of magnesium phosphate if KSP is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 25. So again, KSP means I have the solid ionic compound on the left in equilibrium with its ions, 3 Mg2 plus and 2 phosphate ions. My KSP would not have the solid involved at all. I am going to denote the solubility of Mg3PO42. I'm going to dissolve, denote that, the concentration of that aqueously. I'm going to give that the variable x. It's not in my KSP. It's the ions that are in KSP. But for every one of these, how many Mg2 pluses do I get? I get three of them because of my subscript. And if you even notice in my reaction, it's a one to three uh, ratio of stoichiometry. And for every one of these, I get two phosphates, so I'm going to assign it like that. And now I can plug into my KSP. Okay, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 25th. Here's my magnesium, 3x, and I raise it to the third power. Here's my phosphate, 2x, and I raise it to the, uh, I raise it to the second power. And notice that the coefficient is in two places, or the um, stoich stoichiometry you'll find in two places. You'll find it in front, and you'll find it matching with the um, exponent. And from there, it's just algebra, and I'll get that my molar solubility, which you originally signed as x, is 3.9 times 10 to the negative 6. And in some sources, instead of x, you'll see them using s because it stands for solubility or molar solubility. Again, just be careful doing it this method. Um, it doesn't work out if you end up... Um, starting in something other than water, I would assume like it, doing an ice box. Like if I gave you it starting in sodium, a solution of sodium phosphate or a solution of magnesium chloride, then you are going to have some ion present to start with. But as you can see, KSP, though it sounds intimidating at first, it's really just like any other equilibrium problem. You have initial stuff, make an ice box. Um, you have your given K, okay, you can solve for any of the ion concentrations at equilibrium. And a fancy word for that is solubility or molar solubility. Again, volume is really not going to affect the molar solubility. It's not going to affect your concentrations that you get. It would affect the amount of moles you have overall. But as long as you still have solid present in your container and you're still at equilibrium, you will reach a maximum solubility in molarity uh, regardless of your volume.